So Ken asks about comparing um, Peter Tia supplements to, to my daily supplements. So, so Ken says, hi, thank you for such, such great, great research-based information. Can you do a compare and contrast between your daily supplements and Peter Atiyah's recommendations? So Peter takes Athletic Greens, AG1. I think that's his sort of multivitamin source. Um, he takes the probiotic pendulum, which is supposed to control glucose levels. Um, I personally tried that out when I was wearing my, my continuous glucose monitor and it had the opposite effect on me. So I, I stopped taking the, the pendulum. He takes Carlson's EPA and DHA, four capsules, so two grams of EPA and 1.5 grams of DHA. 5,000 I use a day of vitamin D. And he takes magnesium and calcium, one gram of elemental magnesium, two to three capsules of slow mag, two capsules of 143 mi milligrams of magnesium, 460, it has 416 milligrams of chloride and 238 milligrams of calcium. And then he takes magnesium L3 and 8 in the evening. He takes methylfolate and methyl B12 from Jaro, providing 400 micrograms of methylfolate, 1,000 micrograms of B12. And this is to keep his homocysteine below nine micromoles per liter. And then he takes vitamin B6, 50 megs of B6 three times a week. He used to take it 50 megs a day, but he has seen some people developed some sort of vitamin B6 uh, neuropathy when they take too much. So he's he only does it three times a week. Uh, he takes ashwagandha from Solgar, 600 milligrams. And he takes glycine, two grams of glycine from Thorn. And then magnesium L3 and A, he takes one capsule of mag. Mag, mag, mag teen, which is the brand name of the magnesium L3 and 8. And then when he's traveling, he takes 400 milligrams of phosphorylserine from Jaro. That's what my team came up with looking at a variety of his Q&A, so I might be missing something. So kind of comparing to what I take, I instead of the athletic greens, I take the one multivitamin, although right now I'm taking a, a, a prenatal from Thorn, which just has um, a little bit less vitamin D, um, which I make up with a, a separate vitamin D supplement, but it has some iron. And I've been noticing a beneficial effect on my hair. So um, I'm thinking, you know, the next thing to test is, is it during during menstruation, women lose a lot of iron. And so perhaps just supplementing with iron during that period of time is the way to go. Or, um, you know, so I don't know. Um, I've been, but usually I take the one multivitamin from Thorn and that has methylfolate, it has methyl B12, it has B6. It's not as high of a level. It's not a, you know, so so it is a daily dose I'm getting, but it's not as high as what Peter takes three times a week. So it has a lot of that methyl stuff that he's taking, methylfolate and the B, methyl B vitamins as well. Um, and I take vitamin D. So I get it, usually I get a total of close to what Peter is, about 5,000 I use a day, four to 5,000. Um, total, including what's in my multi. So I'll take like, you know, my one my one multi has 2,000 IUs a day in it. And so then I'll take, you know, 2,000 IUs a day of vitamin D, usually about 2,000 or maybe 3,000 sometimes, depending on the win if it's winter, um, to get a total of four to 5,000 IUs a day. And then my omega-3, um, I take a higher EPA dose in the morning. Um, I try to get around close to two grams of, of a higher EPA concentrated uh, fish oil supplement, and then I get a higher DHA one in the evening. I don't know that that's necessarily important. I just think I try to get a total of around four, anywhere between four to six milligram, uh, sorry, grams of EPA and DHA combined throughout the day. So I do take probably twice to 2.5 times as much omega-3 as um, Peter takes. I take magnesium glycinate. Um, so I take about 125 milligrams. It's the pure encapsulation one for my magnesium source. And then I also take vitamin K2 from Life Extension. And then I take alpha lipoic acid from pure encapsulations. I take Cocovia. So I either do three capsules a day or, and that is something that I do do daily, um, both for just beneficial, uh, you know, it, it, it's important, it, it has a beneficial, beneficial effect on just vascular health. 
and also um, my brain as well. So I either take three capsules a day of the cardiovascular one or I take the powder. I take one scoop with hot water. And then I also do PQQ and that's from Life Extension. I do berberine. Again, um, I've been doing that like it depends. Sometimes I do it every other day. Sometimes I'm doing it like three, three times a week. And that is, I time it with meals and I usually do it twice a day. So it's like, I'll do it with a meal, um, like the, my breakfast or dinner meal. So within an hour or so of the meal, I take ubiquinol from Pure Encapsulations and I'm, I've dropped down to about a hundred milligrams a day. I also do lutein and zeaxanthin from Pure Encapsulations and then I do hydrolyzed collagen powder, about two scoops a day. And then I do, um, I've been doing a scoop of inoc- inositol at night. So just mix it with my water and taking it at night. And then I've also been doing melatonin at night. I've gone back to that higher dose of melatonin where I'm at 10 megs a day. Um, again, I use it for, it controls, like really controls having any sort of night terror disruption um, where I wake up like screaming something and it really seems to have it under control but also i've just been increasingly convinced that um i don't i, th- I think melatonin is just sort of a, b- a beneficial thing f- an antioxidant in the brain i haven't been convinced that it's like really bad bad for you but you, the the jury's still out on that i also take lmnt when i'm doing you know my my workouts uh, my high intensity workouts sauna and then I do an occasional probiotic. Um, I use Flora Stored or Visbiome. You know, this is like once, twice a week. I do an occasional Mariva. I use I use Mariva mostly these days for muscle soreness. Like if I like delayed onset muscle soreness or any sort of pain menstrual related or like if I have a headache, like I didn't get enough sleep or something. And then I also sort of occasionally have been using boron and autophagy renew from life life extension when i say occasional it's those like oh twice a week kind of thing um as well and then um i've also been occasionally using biotin for hair and nails as well so i do a significantly more supplements than peter does and that is really i would say i do a lot of what I, i cover a lot of what he gets and then some I haven't gotten the tarring yet. Um, Mimi's, I think I'm probably going to be experimenting with tarring as well. Uh, Liz is asking what brand melatonin. So the brands I use, most of it, most of the brands I use are Pure Encapsulations and Thorn, and then some Life Extension. Like Life Extension makes my vitamin K2, and they make the PQQ. Like there's some things I just can't get from my other two main brands. Um, Lisa has asked if I've noticed any benefits with the inositol. And really, I, I'm i sleeping really good, but I've also added back my melatonin. So it's hard to, you know, know what which 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 one is, um, you know, but but the inositol is like important for reproductive health as well. So, uh, you know, I, I just I do I, I do think I like I said, I've noticed a benefit on my sleep. But I don't know if that's also just because I've also added back in my melatonin. And Dawn is asking in the brand of electrolytes I'm using. It's LMNT, as Amanda put in the chat here. I personally just like that brand. Now, it's a very high sodium concentration, higher than like noon, which I think I used to use noon, and noon is also good as well. I just personally like the flavors of LMNT. Like they have like a wide variety of like, I just like their their flavors. I really just like it. And um, I do end up sweating a lot. And so the little bit of extra sodium for me is beneficial personally. I also don't add salt to like, I don't add salt to my eggs when I make eggs. I don't add salt to my salad when I make my salad. So I'm not like a salty person getting a ton in, like of salt every day uh, from like, unless I'm eating out. If I'm eating out and stuff like like it's very obvious I'm getting a lot of salt. So, um, you know, it, it really comes down to like, are you already getting a lot of salt? If you're already getting tons of salt from your diet, then you probably don't even need really much electrolyte supplementation, honestly, if you're, you know, because you could be getting enough sodium from from your diet. But uh, per- personally, I, I'm not one of those people that's like high salt diet. <clears throat> so I do like to add the LMNT as well. 
And then Matthew's asking about the acetyl L-carnitine. And yeah, I think I, you know, so I'm doing the alpha lipoic acid and it, I think it would be nice if I could add the acetyl, acetyl L-carnitine to the alpha lipoic acid. You know, my mentor Bruce Ames has shown there was lots of mitochondrial benefits with doing the combination of, of alpha lipoic acid and acetyl carnitine. And I just, you know, I do eat a lot of meat and the carnitine is very high in meat. And the same goes with the taurine as well, which is why I haven't been so eager to quickly have to go out and buy that supplement. You know, so, but, but it, it's it's in the back of my mind, you know, the the adding the acetyl, acetyl L-carnitine with my alpha lipoic acid is sort of there. And the, the alpha lipoic acid, the, the, the main reason that I started supplementing with it is actually not even from what Bruce's data had shown, which is really making old mitochondria look young again. And this is, of course, in animal studies. It's because there's clinical trials showing that it dramatically reduces advanced glycation end products. So it's it's it helps, it, particularly people with type 2 diabetes that have high, high levels of advanced glycation end products, which cause neuropathy, retinopathy, all kinds of, you know, secondary complications that go along with type 2 diabetes. I've uh, I'm interested in reducing the advanced glycation end products. And so that's why I personally, that's what I have in mind when I'm taking my alpha lipoic acid. And I often even forget about the mitochondrial, ben potential bi mitochondrial benefits as, as well. And so that's why I, I don't, um, I'm not as, you know, it's not as, you know, on my high up list to get the acetyl L-carnitine with it. But it is something I, you know, I, I do think about, oh, I should, add that, you know, to get the combination of acetyl L-carnitine with, of course, which is the beneficial for mitochondria. But again, you're getting, if you're getting a lot of eating a lot of meat, you're getting a lot of carnitine as well. LP is asking if I stop taking Brock and if so, why? Um, yeah, I, I, I just kind of started using the, the Moringa powder in my smoothies. And, you know, after just having so many conversations with Dr. Jed Fahey, I've, I've, you know, he kind of convinced me that they're sort of uh, the sulforaphane and the moringin are like doing, they're activating the NRF2 pathway and having a lot of the same beneficial effects. Moringa powder is so much cheaper. And um, it's also just like, I feel like it's easier to know that I'm getting, like it's a lot more stable. So with the with the Brock, there was always the concern of, oh, is this like how much is degraded? How much is, you know, is there how much sulforaphane is even left by the time it makes it to my hands? So I've been, so I've been doing the, I've been adding, I do drink my smoothies and I do try to do them daily. I don't always do them daily, but I definitely am, you know, you know, I would say like four times a week getting, getting my smoothie and I've been adding the Moringa powder to them. And I think, I think that's the main reason why I stopped doing the, the Brock. I'm not taking creatine, Robin, um, but I'm doing, I do supplement with protein powder. Maybe I should have added that, the, added that in as well. Um, I'm trying to, I either will add it to my smoothie or I'll do it standalone depending on if I've already had my smoothie or not. Because I do find that it's hard for me to get up to the 1.6 gra um, grams of protein per kilogram of body weight for me. Um, just it's, I'm not like someone that just eats a lot. So it is, I do find it easier if I can just like get that protein powder. And Cindy's asking what my smoothie looks like these days. So um, these days what my smoothie is, is I do get my kale. So I'm getting most of the time, that's pretty much the only green that I'm putting in there. Sometimes I'll do some romaine lettuce, but um, it's, it's mostly kale. And then I do an avocado and then I do frozen blueberries um, sometimes i'll do frozen blue these are organic frozen organic blueberries along with organic raspberries and organic strawberries so i'll sometimes do a little bit of a organic mixed berries but a lot of times i'm heavy on the blueberries because that's really what's shown to be the most concentrated with respect to polyphenols and um, anthocyanins as well i do quite a bit of blueberries to be honest uh, I'm, I'm, when I was doing the whole like, you know, keto experimentation thing, I would do like just a handful, but I'm not doing that now. So I actually, I really go heavy on the organic blueberries in the smoothie because I think they're, the blueberries are so beneficial and it makes me feel really good. It's just like this after effect that I get. And then I add in collagen powder. So I'll do the Great Lakes collagen powder, um, two scoops, 
And then I'll add in the moringa powder and I do like a big heaping tablespoon of that. It, depending on whether or not, again, uh, I, I do a workout without, if I'm doing a separate protein shake. These, these days I've been adding a little bit of just unflavored whey protein powder in to my to my smoothies because I'm just trying to get a little extra protein in. So I've been doing that a lot and then some water and that's it. That's that's what my smoothie is. 